First of all, thank you for participating in our webinar, which is uh, our first session of Leadership Accelerator program. And just to let you know, uh, we, uh, we have participants from four continents and eight different countries. Uh, and for now, let's uh, start introducing our speakers. First, we have Hossein Mugazami, uh, who is founder and CEO of Inner Circle, Inner Circle Magazine. Uh, and he is also uh, Iran's ambassador, IU, uh, and YDC. Uh, and we will be talking about what is your leadership and why is it important. Then Roberto Hernandez will be talking about how he managed his team as founder and also CEO of your building the future global company. After that, Naita Baba, founder of Club Magnus, will be talking about uh, how we can connect with international organizations to present our community. And also she will be talking about her own experience and as presenter of India in uh, YFP. Uh, and after that, uh, we have Guku Randra, uh, is the founder of Bright Space and Good World Change Maker. Uh, he will be talking about uh, how we can do uh, our relationship with a stranger. Uh, here we have. Uh, now, of course, then you can uh, start. Okay, thank you, Mehdi. Now I'll start sharing my screen. I will turn off my camera just if we had any uh, connection issues. Now you should be able to see my screen, right? Do you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Start. We can see. All right. So the first question that we raise is what is youth leadership program and who are young leaders? Well, youth leadership is the practice of teens exercising authority over themselves or others. Youth leadership has been elaborated often as a theory in which young people gain the skills and knowledge necessary to lead civil engagement, judicial reform, and also community organizing activities. A youth leader is a young individual who is responsible for building a sense of community uh, that can provide an opportunity for both uh, spiritual and social development. But all these young leaders have some skills that makes them different from other young people around the world. It doesn't matter where you live and what kind of life standards you have. These are the main skills that all uh, young leaders have them. And that's why we call them youth leaders. Uh, but first of all, we want to talk about it. Why is it important to have young leaders? Why is these uh, youth leadership programs are important? Well, McDaniel College, which is in Westminster, Maryland, uh, they have uh, some programs uh, that is related to youth leadership. And one of the professors, when we interviewed with him, he said exactly that sentence. They have a greater understanding of problems facing other youth and fresh perspective for how to address these problems, which means they have the power to empathize and self-awareness uh, that can help us uh, help them understand what other young uh, people in their societies are feelings. And that's how they can understand them better. So let's move and talk about those skills that all the young leaders need them. And we want to talk about them exactly in this session. Here are eight main skills that all young leaders mostly have these skills. And these are the necessary ones that they will need them to lead their communities. The first one is decision making. Decision making has become a really important part of nowadays young leaders around the world, because especially with that pandemic and this kind of stuff, uh, deciding which way to go, which kind of solution uh, to make 
uh, has got really, really harder than before. There are some phases of decision making uh, that, in my opinion, if you go uh, through all these filters, through all these phases, you will have, you know, at least the best uh, decision that you can take. Because uh, these filters uh, make your sense of, you know, look, looking logically to problems and finding the best solution for them, it will make it better. The first phase, in my opinion, for decision uh, making is problem recognition. Look, when we want to make a decision, it means that we want to have a solution for a specific problem. And because of that, we have to recognize the problems. Most decisions uh, making start with some sort of problem. Uh, and that's why we should specify our problem and we should know our aim of making this decision because that will help us to specify uh, the solution and making uh, the best decision. The second one is the search process. You know, most of us are not expert on everything around us. You know, in the search phase, we research for, I don't know, services and uh, other alternatives that can satisfy our needs. And especially in that time that, you know, searching engines have become, uh, you know, a big part of our life and there are ultimate uh, search processors and we can easily use them uh, for that purposes and add to that, you know, uh, searching engines, we have the humans. I mean, we shouldn't ignore the human beings, our friends and families, they all have had uh, some many different experiences that they can offer and give us some recommendations. In most cases, recommendations from actual people instead of search engines are more prepared. So that's why we always say that uh, try to, you know, take some uh, rec recommendations from uh, people, especially people who are facing the same problem that you want to make a decision for. The third one is evaluating alternatives. Look, uh, when you want to make a decision, it, uh, you are on a crossroad. I mean, choosing uh, two things, or you have some multiple options and you want to choose between one of them. Uh, there is a trick that I use, and it is most of the time, you know, it comes out great. For example, imagine you have three options. Just uh, put in your mind that you have to choose one of them. I mean, uh, Within all these three options, you choose one of them and put those two as an alternative. And speak to yourself, what does other solution have that the first one doesn't have? And then you can compare the three together and get the first, the best result that you can get for that decision. And this is when you enter the selection stage, will we, uh, when you can, uh, you know, select your decision and make the best decision. After that, there is another uh, young leader skill that in my opinion, everyone should maintain that. And it is set smart goals. Well, smart stands for three specific words that mm, each one of these have a you know, special meaning. The first one, which is S, stands for set a specific goals. Well, your goal must be clear and well-defined. I mean, general, uh, generalized goals are unhelpful because they don't provide sufficient direction. Remember, you need goals to show you the way. Make it as easy as you can to get where you want to go by defining precisely where you want to end up. The second word is M. You know, measurable. Uh, I didn't put, you know, other words after measurable because I think it is the most important. Look, uh, measurable goals means that you identify exactly uh, what is, uh, what you will see after achieving that goal. Hear and feel when you reach your goal, it means breaking your goal down into measurable elements. You will need uh, concrete uh, evidence. Being happier is not an evidence. Uh, for example, you should uh, speak to yourself and say, after reaching that goal, what kind of, you know, uh, trophies, what kind of uh, advantages can this solution, uh, can this goal uh, bring into my life? The third one is set attainable goals. Look, 
we all have some goals that I can call them dreams because they are not goals. Goals are mostly attainable. I mean, goals are something that you can, if you work hard uh, for it, you can get it. But dreams is a dream picture in your mind that it may not come true because it is really generalized and it is really far away from the things that you already have. And it is like jumping from the first stage immediately to the uh, 10th stage. The fourth one is set revealing goals. And goals should be revealing to the direction you want your life and career to take. By keeping goals aligned with this, you will develop, the, you will develop and focus uh, on what you want to achieve. Set wildly uh, scattered and incarnate goals, and you will fritter your time and life away. The last one is set time-bounded goals. We are all here that sentence which said, a uh, goal without a deadline is just a dream. When we put a deadline for our goal, uh, we can be, you know, we can focus more on that uh, problem. We can focus more on that goal to reach it better. Again, this means that you know when you can celebrate your success. When you're working on a deadline, your sense of urgency increases and achievement will come that much quicker. In my opinion, these were the skills, the beginning skills that you need to become a young leader. And I wanted to end my speech with that quote, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality by Warren Bennis. And now we will go ahead to Roberta Hernandez, who is the CEO and also founder of the Youth Building the Future Global. And his company has working with a lot of uh, international organization and he has real development. And today he'll be talking about how he organize, uh, you know, his team, how he manage his team and about the decision making, about his periods of, uh, I don't know, failure, how we can handle this problem. And today he'll be talking about exactly this. Roberto, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, Hossein. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this session. I really appreciate that you all take the time to join this um, this session and uh, so we can talk today with all of you. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, I'm gonna share um, first uh, the website of Youth Building the Future Global so you can uh, relate a little bit more with all of our activities and then we can start um, talking about one of our um, projects and the ideas that we're developing and how uh, just the way Mr. Hassan said it, how to apply that smart methodology and how also um, organ how the team uh, has been organized through this time and how uh, we achieve our goals. So um, this is the website. You can uh, easily find it at any browser, which is Youth Building the Future Global. But um, I'm going to focus on these uh, projects and campaigns that we're actually developing so you know uh, you can have a little bit of idea uh, about our projects. We mainly focus on sustainability, uh, specifically the sustainable development goals and the 23rd agenda. So based on that, uh, we've been developing five years uh, working on the agenda and that's why we have uh, this variety of projects. Uh, we start with our first project was Youth Presages, where we focus on um, talking about the sustainable development agenda, but we also have now a journal in a magazine uh, where uh, we can collaborate with international students. So they uh, share their, uh, their ideas and post them. Uh, we also have climate sessions where we talk about climate change and climate actions with also international students, uh, uh, local narrative and also global narrative about what actions are we taking locally and globally against climate change? Um, another one, which is uh, one of my favorites, is MEXDS, which is Mexico for Sustainable Development. And now we're working on international campaigns, though the interest of the people. So you can have also um, 
a sustainable development campaign for your country or your state where you uh, actually can get funds and uh, develop some other projects. And uh, finally, we have um, interviews with young students and uh, local people that tell us or their narrative and how they feel, how they've been developing through the last years and what helped them. That's mainly for motivate more people, more uh, students. Um, and I also shared this at the beginning with all of you, because I think uh, that's part of uh, what has been shared already on the session. I think that find that what motivates you, that a specific goals is, as Mr. Hussein was telling, is what allowed us to be more creative and uh, more diverse, which is also in need right now. Uh, I, I will also love to mention the COVID-19 and how uh, we need to focus on attending uh, vulnerable people because that that's what uh, will help the most. Um, I'm gonna share now. Okay. My slides. So please let me confirm if you can see them. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about um, community leadership, specifically on sustainable development. Um, I'm going to say it uh, in a few words, so it's not complicated. I want to keep it uh, understandable for everyone. And I personally think that if you're developing a project, if you're creating a new business or some something that you that keeps you awake on the night that you want to create or develop, definitely have to contemplate the sustainable development goals. And I'm not saying this because I only work on sustainable development, mm -hmm. but I mean it uh, because to COVID-19 and social um, insecurities and social, uh, the projects uh, that we'll be developing in not only uh, for youth in the future, but also with other um, organizations, we all realize that COVID-19 changed the narrative and changed the way we're approaching to people. Right now, I think this session is that is a result of that. This session couldn't uh, be possible if we don't have the internet. And right now we're focused on um, in meetings, uh, specifically creating this um, social uh, projects on the web because we can reunite together. So that's part of uh, locally and globally what's been done. Um, I also want to share um, this first slide where you can uh, find a website, you can scan it. And uh, this is another website that I, I would love uh, that you can uh, save and hope to share with you later. Because uh, right now, uh, as I told you before, we are developing a new magazine, uh, so you can collaborate with all of us, not only in sustainable development, but in other projects or teams that uh, you're interested to publish uh, with the uh, University of Mexico. So uh, you feel safe, you feel um, accurate that you have the support of the university. So um, as Mr. Hassan was saying, we smart, uh, methodology, I think it's uh, translated to uh, the sustainable development goals, definitely, because we have a specific goals. We can measure them uh, while using the indicators. We can uh, attain the goals uh, and also we have a deadline. You know, the 23rd agenda have a deadline. Now we're in the decade of action and we only have 10 more years to achieve each one of these goals. I mean, it's different by this, but each country is different by the social inequalities and the uh, breach of inequalities. But I think uh, it is understandable just because uh, the way that is built is understandable for everybody uh, from the top, which is academia and uh, researchers to uh, young students and uh, kindergarten uh, kids. 
So that's what I uh, want to share with you, uh, mainly about the sustainable development goals and how to approach them. Um, this is a, an image that also calls my attention the most. And I think uh, that's part of this is how to organize. How can I create a project? How do I know which project is best for me? And how do I know a project works well in my country or in my community? I think that's definitely need to focus and see what are the needs of your community. You might create a project, but it might not seem uh, important or relevant for the rest of your community. But it's because it's not focused necessary on the needs, on the priority needs of the community. So focus in knowing the narrative on what are the needs of the people, I think that will change and will make your project a, a good project and a project that will long for, um, for the time in your community. Though you might set some goals, this will help that uh, uh, you might achieve your goals. So if you achieve your goals, you're gonna see that there's more though the deadline or using the deadline um, would uh, allow you to make a narrative in a exercise, uh, kind of an exam and examination of how your projects are developing and how the things that you don't are getting. Um, I also love this image. I think uh, many of you have seen it maybe, which is uh, how COVID-19 is changing uh, our societies. And we see that not only economically, but also educational and uh, the way that uh, we buy, the way that we relate even with our neighbors. But uh, the next waves are gonna be the recession, but also climate change is coming and also biodiversity collapse. So I think that this is really important to maintain in all, all, in all of our projects that uh, the relationship between uh, humans, community and the environment is one of the main things that you as young generation need to focus to achieve a better society and to reduce inequalities, not only with humans, but also with uh, biodiversity. And finally, I also wanna share uh, these global indicators of uh, framework for sustainable development goals, which I think is really important because shows um, how to measure your impact, how to measure which actions are you taking and how to know if those actions are actually helping the people. Because um, I think, and I'm gonna talk uh, from my experience, when I start my projects, I didn't know about this. So I, I just, thought that I could change the world, I, I could change and help my community. But if you don't have this, uh, this idea of how to develop a project, how to measure your impact and how to increase and keep um, active those projects, then you're gonna fail. And that's something uh, we almost uh, don't share. I think that's a young people, we see a lot of photos, we see a lot of media where we all succeed, but we don't talk about failure. So I think it is also important to talk about failure. We all know uh, in some point of our life that failure, it's natural, but also failure, uh, it's something that makes us stronger. So don't be afraid to fail. Uh, don't be uh, afraid of um, doing things wrong, uh, but also learn from your mistakes. That's what I, I would love uh, to share on this session. So don't be afraid to, uh, to make things strong, but also uh, learn from your mistakes. You definitely got to see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And uh, also uh, how to uh, create an international theme. Um, I think that definitely the way that sustainable development goals are all interconnected and are all interrelated uh, one to another. I think that's how your team most work. You might have people on uh, Thailand and India, Mexico, USA, Canada, Brazil. But the main thing, the important, most important thing is that you all understand and you all have the same, uh, the same channel. So uh, they all working on the same thing. One of the, uh, I'm gonna tell this story. One of the mistakes that we took through these five years was that uh, we were creating a new network on the USA, but uh, the people um, that we're helping and the community that we're helping uh, to create this, this new community 
were a little bit different uh, with ideas that we were sharing. So uh, I think uh, by, by saying this, I tend to understand also the narrative and the social surrounding of the people. So you uh, you also know how uh, how their vision is, how the vision of the project is. So. Uh, that's what I would love to say to this point. I'll love, I also love to stop and uh, see if you, any of you have any questions to this point so we can uh, reply them uh, one by one. So thank you so much. Thank you a lot, Roberto. Guys, if you have any question you want to ask Roberto, just feel free to ask them through the chat box and we will answer them. All the media that we use for today's session, we will uh, send them via your email after the session. And again, feel free to ask all your questions through the chat box. Roberto, I think that yeah, I think we can, yeah. I think we can take the sessions at the end or maybe uh, through mail, so it doesn't have to be right now. Yes. But there is a question: How can we resist on our on our hard goals? How can we resist on our hard goals? Someone just asked in the chat box, so you can answer it. Yeah. So um. How can we resist to the hard goals? I think that uh, being resilient, that's the main thing. And how uh, I think a, character, a characteristic of uh, young people being resilient. Uh, I, uh, on another conference and analyzing other projects, not only mine, but from other people, we also work in other international networks. I was thinking how Malala used that side and how Greta Thunberg developed their networks and how they keep going through their projects also uh, through these years, which is uh, hard years for um, for all uh, networks. So I think that actually being resilient, how uh, being disrupted is uh, the characteristic of our generation. I think that doing the, the uh, things the same way the older generation have done it does not create a big impact, not create a no. change. Uh, which is what we're actually looking for. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, the um, other question is if I have another to... communication. How to keep our motivation? Yeah, um, you can find me on. After failure. Yeah. Uh, before asking, uh, replying to that, you can find all my networks and my email um, in this image. I hope you can see it. Um, like J Arch AJ ninety seven. Um, so you can find me and contact me. And the other question, sorry, I can find it. All right, I'll put a link uh, in the chat box. So. I will connect them to you after the session. Yeah, and the other question is how to keep motivated um, in hope after failure. I think um, what what it have worked for me is that I think I'm a person that really uh, understand and loves the sustainable development goals, but, uh, but not only me, I also seen other people, as I was telling you, with Greta Thunberg and Malala, with education and climate action, I think uh, the most important thing uh, when you face failure is to, as I, as I told you before, is to understand that failure is normal, but also uh, uh, understand and realize what, where is your failure and what your failure. So uh, you can wake from that situation, you can stand up and keep going. So uh, also love your projects, love the ideas that you're developing. That's the main thing uh, to understand. If you don't really love it, if you don't really embrace 
your ideas, then people don't want to understand or don't want to click with the ideas that you're sharing to them. So it is important to realize that the love that you have to ideas is impacting other, other people's perception. So uh, love your ideas and keep going. Don't, don't desperate. Uh, everything takes time. So uh, go step by step. That will be my recommendations. And add to the recommendation that you just said, I will add something. The thing that uh, worked for me and was really great was uh, setting daily goals. But when you set daily goals, they're easier to achieve. And uh, at the end of the day, when you achieve them, uh, the sense of, you know, the feeling of happiness and becoming successful in that specific day will keep you motivated for the next days. And also about the question that one of our the participant just asked about that we live in a bad financial situation, bad, I don't know, country and this kind of stuff. I have to say that I live in the same country that you live, the same financial problems. But I think in the first stages at, uh, as a young leader, you will not need that much money. You will not need that much financial support. The only thing that you will uh, need is a phone and a social media platforms to spread uh, what you want to, you know, just discuss about it, what you want to involve in uh, through those social media platforms so everyone will know you. And that's all uh, you need for the first stages, for the beginning of your uh, way. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I also want to thank uh, all the uh, people that remain to this point of this session and the uh, comment of Alexandria, which uh, shared a little bit quote of Napoleon uh, about failure. So you can find it on the chat. And yeah. Thank you, Alexandrina. I don't see any other questions. So I think that we can move. If you are done, we can move to Nainika. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Roberto, for the time you put. And now Nanika will talk about the youth leadership program and some skills that she uh, thinks that maintaining them will make you a successful young leader. Now, Nanika, you can start right now. You can share your screen to show your slides. Thank you, Hussein, for the introduction. So hello to all the delegates or all the participants we have. So I'll share my screen. I hope you guys can see it. You guys can see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll go with the first thought that changed everything for me. That was thinking out loud. So when I joined college, there was lack of exposure in my college. And I found that people really don't know anything about entrepreneurship or particularly about social entrepreneurship. And I want, I don't want to remain at their place. I want to explore and make a change or make a difference. But how, the how part was really missing. So I started reading about stuff. I started connecting with people who are already making a difference in the world and somehow uh, are in charge of great projects. So I used to contact them and used to reproduce the ideas or have a conversation with them. So the title goes Thinking Out Loud. You have to think and you have to give your opinion quite out loud on social media platforms and you need to connect on the connect with like-minded people and accordingly form relationship with them. Moving on, uh, this is my story. So I started with a storytelling platform, which was Kyra. So they these guys used to feature stories about the inequality, disparity, the wrong things going around and everything related to that. So that is how I developed empathy in me, that you really need to empathize with people and you really need to uh, kind of form a bond with them to understand what their problems are and not just read them about, you can read about those problems in the books, but going over there, connecting to their stories and listening to the problem which they are facing in a very uh, kind of entertaining way this will develop the empathy in you and you will be able to understand or walk through their life cycle and you can solve the problem of those people in a better way. Then I joined ISAC. I was the experience manager over there and I worked in the entrepreneur sector. 
So my task was to uh, contact incubation centers and get small and medium enterprises on board with us. And in the same way, I formed very uh, IR connect with 120 plus countries. So I used to invite people to come to India and experience the Majani life, which is the carefree, uh, carefree life and curate projects with them. So all these kind of things helped me a lot with the, sorry, yes. There is some error in the presentation mode. Apologies for the error, but the screen is freezed, I guess. It is zoom on the screen, so we can zoom it just. Yeah, but the zoom is not doing it. Okay, it's fine. Moving on to the next experience, I joined Robin Hood Army. So we used to work on SDG4, that is quality education. So I used to go to slum areas to teach underprivileged kids, those kids who cannot afford education at all. And the situation there was really bad. So there was two kind of societies which we, which I got to see. One where every resource is provided to the children, another where there was no resources. The reason why they are not sending the children to school uh, um, despite the government was offering free education because they have nothing to eat. So they want their children to go out and work rather than go to a school because for them, filling their stomach is more important than getting the education. So Robin Hood Army work in that area. So we work on SGG2 and SGG4. I'm still part of Robin Hood Army. So there we conduct food drives. So whatever the food is left in, um, in restaurants or uh, after an event, we take that food. Instead of wasting that food, we give them to the people who really need it. So we are saving the food uh, and we are feeding the people who really need it. And once their stomachs are filled, they can they can uh, they can send their children to schools. Or if the schools are not nearby or they face any kind of difficulty, so we have teachers. We have people like young college students who would go over there and teach those children in a proper classroom setting. So this is uh, the work which I did with Robin Hood Army. Then to make the college people, my college people more aware about the social entrepreneurship, I started Club Magnet. So uh, I used to invite people. We used to talk about uh, whatever the changes we need to require in the world. We used to organize session like World Cafe, where we, would where we would discuss the world problems and the cultural, political, and scientific innovations in the society and different countries which are taking place. Moving on to forward, this is the uh, turning point in my life when I got the chance to represent India at World Youth Forum uh, 2019 in Egypt. It was a fully funding, op a fully funded opportunity, and I got to meet the president of Egypt there and to uh, and network with one of the world most renowned leaders, um, people from um, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, people from a World Economic Forum, and 36 global startups who are working in the field of sustainable development. So all this knowledge I took from there and applied in various projects, uh, on-ground projects, or uh, and uh, I, did, I did free growth and consultancy to the NPOs and the NGOs in my country. So how I got the opportunity? So um, I'm a voracious reader. I read books. And like I mentioned, I always put out my opinion on different platforms, whether it is LinkedIn or Twitter or through my blog. So through that, I, uh, I got to uh, connect with a lot of people. So I have a, and he was in the organizing committee of the World Youth Forum. Uh, so he sent me this opportunity and he said, prepare it for it well, and you should submit the essays and all. So uh, that is the opportunity which was shared to me by a friend. I inquired about it. I went through the WIF website and look what it required from me. So uh, I prepared the application in three days. And what I wrote in the application and the application essays was total honesty, like what I have seen working on ground. I didn't exaggerate on anything. I just wanted, I was curious and I let my curiosity uh, came over me and I write, wrote every as essay or every point according to what I want to give back to the world and what are the uh, knowledge or learnings I want to take from WIF and the kind of uh, skills I will be uh, giving to the people or the, I'll be sharing um, to in the, in the forum itself. 
and what kind of uh, events or tracks I want to participate in. So it was an elaborative uh, application which I filled and I got through the interview and this is how I got the opportunity to uh, present my country in WIF. So the main part which have uh, helped me in the entire journey was the communication part. So I'll just say communicate, go out, uh, be yourself, go on every social media platform, use that platform to create a change rather than just talking people out there. One of the quote which I really love of Anthony Robbins or you, might, you guys might know him like uh, with the name Tony Robbins. So he said to effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. See, the way you perceive the world, it is not the same in probably the African countries or in the Europe or in the American region. So be empathetic toward people, listen to them. You don't have to judge them. So this, these are the points which I'll be elaborating furthermore. Moving on to the next slide, while communicating, I'll not say you have to be a pro on public speaking or you have to be really good, you don't have to be anxious or these kind of things because these kind of things you guys already know. I'll talk about listen. Listen before you speak. Listen and comprehend what the other person is saying first before giving your reaction or before uh, speaking because it will help a lot. Once you will comprehend what the other one is saying, and make sense of it, believe me, it will make a lot of difference. The person will be able to connect with you more. Value, build relationship, and do not have any agenda while approaching people. Like, do not ask for favors to them. Do not ask for immediate, um, any kind of favor or gesture for them. Like, just be there, provide value. Just try to build honest relationship with them. Uh, what you want to give or what, how you want to help, then seek for help from, from them rather than a favor. This will make a huge difference and you will be able to form a bond which is longer, which is more strong and which leads you toward collaborative leadership. Honest appreciation. Always appreciate people for the good work they are doing because it have this kind of journey which they have walked through the kind of experiences they have and how they are struggling every day overcoming the fear their challenges and make a difference so honestly I appreciate those people and by appreciation i do not mean flattery flattery can be easily detected so do not uh, try to impress those people listen to their story have some background research on them uh, don't uh, just don't open up LinkedIn and send a random, a random message to them, go through their profile, go through their website, the work they are doing, and then make an honest opinion about it and be vocal about it. Empathy. Never judge someone unless you have walked in their shoes for a mile. Uh, you will get to know a lot of people in the forum that have totally devastated background. I met a person from uh, South Sudan and her parents were killed in front of our eyes. So if that person is introvert and not talking much, just be empathetic toward them, ask them, make them feel comfortable. And that person was a human rights activist and she is doing a brilliant job. So there, what empathy comes into picture, you don't have to judge them why the person is acting in a certain way because you don't know their backstory at all. Like what are, what, uh, what are the emotional challenges they have gone through? So be empathetic, don't judge people and if you keep these four points in the mind, believe me, you can communicate with any person. You don't have to be a good public speaker or you don't have to have certain kind of skills for that. Just these four simple things. Talking about leadership, effective leadership is not about making speeches or being light. Because when you, when you uh, start the journey of being a leader, there will be haters, there will be naysayers, there will be people who will say you your idea is not going to work, what are you doing? There will be doubters and you have to just become deaf ear to those people. You don't have to listen to them. You just have to be focused on your goal. And leadership is defined by results and not attributes because at the end of the day, if there is no result or no solid outcome, then somewhere you are just chasing uh, our illusion of leadership and not the leadership itself. Again, this, these quotes are by Peter Drucker and I'll highly recommend to read the book Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. It's a brilliant book. 
and i'll recommend you guys to read it so leadership there are many attributes to leadership but you we all can we are all leaders nobody is born a leader leadership is a skill that is acquired so what i follow is the golden circle while curating any project or uh, kind of giving any thought or working on any thought this is the golden circle which is curated by simon sinek so it goes like why how and what you need to be clear on the why your purpose why you want to work on that idea what is the reason what is your memory related to it or uh, what you have faced in the first place which you don't want other people to face like if someone is bullied you don't want other person to get bullied that is your why your why is that you want to finish the finish the bully culture in your school or the area or the work or the corporate world around you in your company anywhere it could be so your why is because you have already suffered to from that problem and you know the negative feeling you don't want anyone else to suffer from that feeling that is your why and to overcome that or to to actualize or to kind of eradicate the bully thing how how you going to do that what is the action you what are the actions you are going to take to eradicate that problem that is your how and the whole action thing and believe me that action is it should be achievable and it is al uh, along with the smart goal which was explained by hosein the smart goals you can use the smart goal thing to curate your how uh, you can create a goal and you can have a particular timeline to it and according to that you can go with the actions you want to take uh, to to el eliminate the problem and the last part is what what are the tangible things you are going to do like you 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 want to for like to explain it in a better way let's say you want to eradicate the bully problem and you decided that you are going to spread the awareness about it that is your how spreading the awareness part is going to be how like how the person who is bullied how uh, how that person feel and what are the consequences or what bully does to people spreading the awareness like how bully the the person who is bullying other person might be that person uh, have faced the same situation and kind of doing it to you to feel better like that is the awareness part what like how, what are the uh, the like we can say you can send out flyers or you can make presentations you can uh, what tangible things are you are going to do to achieve your high so these are the three things like you can go for a presentation you can go for a kind of a group meeting or a community circle so all those tangible things you are going to do falls under what so this is the golden circle which you can follow and i will recommend uh, i do recommend it to companies and uh, npos and ngos to have a, a golden circle for your organization so whoever joins it or whatever the idea you want to propagate people uh, can have a clear why how and what to it so that they can produce ideas around it and they don't get confused so that's it that was uh, my take on leadership and communication and how applying all those ideas and whatever the learnings i have uh, acquired through working in various organization helped me to have the journey i have recently i got selected for the prestigious harvard conference which is uh, harvard project for asian international relations and that will be commencing from tomorrow so if you guys have any doubts or want to connect with me i'll be sharing the learnings uh, the learning of the conferences through my newsletter so you can subscribe the newsletter uh, by going to clubmagnet.com or by going to the website nanikababbar.com and you can sign up for the newsletter and you can read the previous issues as well that's i hope you guys this was informative for you guys and i'm open to questions now thank you a lot nanika that was awesome teaching and also awesome slides I will be sending your uh, website link into the chat box. And guys, if you have any question, feel free to ask me through the chat box and ask Nainika any question about her slides and uh, other things. <laughs> There is a question from Alexandrina. Some leaders start with what? In most cases, there is a source of problem. is they may never get to why
See, why uh, if you are the founder of a, a organization, then your personal why should be there, but that why is not of the organization or the members of the core committee why. I won't say they will fail or they won't have any success. What I'll say is that you need to have a group meeting or a team meeting. And uh, while conducted that, uh, conducting uh, those team meeting, you shall ask each member of the team uh, to uh, have their own why and you can integrate those. So if, if someone is joining your organization, they have their why attached to it, right? So you can have an effective communication session or team building session and the purpose, the common purpose, you can arrive to that common purpose. Thank you, Ola. I don't see any other question in the chat box, so I think we can move to Google. Now, <coughs> what is your opinion about it? I think there are two questions, you can answer them. Okay, so. I don't think so we should fight with our rivals because it will drain us from the energy we have. So fighting with our rivals, they are rivals in the first place because they don't want to understand our concept. So if you go on and start fighting with the every rival you have, it will drain you out of the, you know, out of your energy and your positivity. I just say ignore them. Ignore them, uh, ignore them to the point that they are no more relevant to you and work on your purpose work uh, on the project or the idea you want to build into a product and those rivals will be taken care of by the god you don't have to worry about them you don't have to go out and fight with those people so you won't be enthusiastic Mason, yeah, you won't be enthusiastic every day. There will be bad days. There will be days when it will be really tough to get out of bed and, you know, get to work or your team, there will be some kind of mess up in the team or some people not listening to you or even before the event, there will be so many things go haywire and you cannot be enthusiastic uh, every day. So I'll just suggest that uh, whenever you feel low or whenever there is something bad happening around you, or not according to what you have planned, communicate honestly with your team. Just be clear with them. Tell them the situation, entire situation truthfully, and they will uh, support you and they will add energy to you. Thank you a lot. I also put a link in the chat box if you wanna check uh, Club Magnet website to join their newsletters, to subscribe to their newsletters. I guess for the further questions, I'll say you can uh, send those questions to Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm very active on both the platforms and I can answer those. There. Yes, I'll put a link to Instagram and they will ask the next question there. Now, due to our limited time, we will move to Gukul. Gukul Rajendran from India, who is a founder and CEO of the Brain Space and also Good World Change Maker. He'll be talking about how we can make our relationship with other people as he's really good at this subject, as far as I know. He has got a lot of friends internationally and in you know building a relationship through communicating with other people. He's really good at this and go cool, we can start. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I'll share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Okay. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see you guys here. Special thanks to the Inner, Inner Circle magazine and its teams and other partners of the today's web webinar. So why should you guys listen to me because why are you guys listening to me for advice from to be a leader uh, to attain leadership so because uh, because i'm telling this because uh, every leader is unique and uh, each leader has to face different situations so uh, so i have to say that 
you should uh, get something from our, our experiences from others and implement that uh, which you feel should be taken and implemented to in your situation. So that's a good leader's uh, first thing they should learn. Okay, so first I'll say something about me. Uh, uh, one minute. Let's Okay, I'm Gokul Rajendran and I'm from Kerala, India, and I'm a medical student, and and also I'm the founder of the Brain Space, and I'm the go and I'm the uh, and I'm also the change maker in Goodwill, and also the global student council leader. Uh, so there we have global student council in Goodwill. So so uh, Hussein asked me how some questions that I had to explain to you guys. So how do you build a relationship between uh, relationship with uh, strangers from different countries. So for me, I have to say, uh, first of all, I have to say something about brain space because hmm, brain space is a page uh, for people to share ideas and experience with other people, which can help others improve their lives. Like we had an interview with Nainika, she's here, uh, and also with uh, Roberto. From Nainika, I gained the, exp uh, gained the experience, uh, not experience, the knowledge how to build a community in my uh, local, um, in my school, that how to, I should, how, how I should make a community. Like she made a community in her uh, college, like Club, Ma uh, Club Majinda, and she uh, told me the, everything about that. It was an experience of uh, months, like she took two, two to four months of experience for that. But uh, she gave that experience in 50, uh, 20 minutes to me so that I can learn from that and implement that in my um, school also. So uh, without further ado, then I can go ask, uh, say the answer for those questions. Okay. Uh, to add something more, I forgot to say this, that uh, uh, I started uh, I started uh, Green Space so that just, uh, it was not so big effective thing for me, uh, effective because I thought it was, it will be not so uh, popular also, and it will not be so effective, but uh, it was my small step. So I started my small step uh, and uh, uh, at the end, everything like Goodwill also, I started uh, with small steps, They're just doing and just doing something. Mm, it was not so evident also, but uh, at the end, everything added up and it made uh, something out of that for me. So I, I say everybody, every, and to everyone here listening to this, do something like anything is possible, no problem, anything you can do, but uh, at the end, it will add up to give you some result. So that's the thing I had to say. And how do we build relationship with strangers from different countries? As Suzanne told, I'm good at that. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit right because I, I have friends like Nainika, Hussein, et cetera, they're from other country. And the key factors behind making relationship is, I think it's communication skills and common sense. Like in communication, you should have the knowledge to speak to the other person. Uh, I think just uh, the, uh, having the knowledge of English is enough for that. And in the common, uh, common, sense, common sense point, uh, you should have to be, uh, should have to check the profile of the person. Like, uh, to be uh, to make sure that the person is not fake or spammer or other antisocial etc that the person uh, that the person we should we should avoid uh, something something like that so these are the two points that you should keep in mind when talking to a new stranger because the internet is not so trustable so even if you're going to make uh, like uh, you're going to make a friend a friend like um, if I'm going to Hussein page, for example, and uh, sometimes if you look, uh, we should first look at his profile. So if you see the profile and it look, looks good, so, uh, and you start talking to him um, and he starts messaging you back and you should be careful enough to not share your information, like uh, personal details should not be shared to any of the uh, strangers. You can only share the details, like whatever you put in social media, that details should only be shared, like your name, uh, you're from, I'm from India. So I can only say that I'm from India. So India is so huge country. So he can't tra track you or give that det details and hack on you or do anything else bad to you. So be sure that you don't share something like that. And the key factor to talking to a stranger is communication still and, and common sense, that's it. And things you should keep in mind while doing that is to be, uh, you should be authentic.
make make sure that person is also authentic and you are also authentic so and also be polite and be funny like shouldn't 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 be uh, shouldn't think of that judge that that judge that judge that person before he is so he didn't message me back within this time or oh, he is not so interested in me don't think like that be polite be funny and accept the person who they are really because it's a different culture out there in the world you all, all know that uh, i am from india and husain is from iran and it's different time zone different culture different school time everything is different so we should accept that and make sure that you also don't ask him them personal questions like they will feel uncomfortable when you guys ask personal questions like where are you from where what do you do etc so i think you should not avoid that also so to build a relationship with each other other people be authentic to uh, to them be polite and make sure you don't share your personal information which you have not shared in social media before okay uh, that's the thing and the next question he asked me was hmm, do you have any tips for young people to build their network and communicate easily with others so the one thing i would like to say tell to you guys is to use yeah i would recommend you and to use good work because a person asks me such a question will always be a good leader because uh, if a person asks me this question i i can make sure that he is looking for a community or he is he is a good leader and he wants some he wants some tip from me to uh, to improve himself so that's why i don't have to say anything more to him just have to give him a community or a network how to help him network with people learn about a new culture you'll get new experiences etc so and uh, goodwill is a platform best platform in the world, uh, best platform in the world right now to connect with people who are looking for opportunities and also connect with each other um, but it's not like tinder you have to date not so like the dating app it's like uh, you can talk to new guys new people and learn about their culture learn about their uh, views of the world etc and there's new opportunities also like scholarship scholarship you can there's there, there are cash prizes available for you and there's much more things you can learn i also won 200 dollars in goodwill better took the challenge in goodwill so it was a very great thing for me uh, it's 200 dollars i got uh, so uh, there are international you can see here there are international uh, international groups like you can chat with many many people uh, uh, international groups many topics are there everybody is so friendly and yeah and this we can also make profiles and this is my profile you can see here so we can make profiles here and also showcase our achievements on this platform so that you can share this to your universities and also it will be great to see uh, other people uh, other people's achievements and also get inspired and then we have explore page that we can find new people and there will be have we have special sessions for talking with people like you can see good uh, this is a session with natalie one of the goodwill uh, goodwill staffs and we were just talking about other, uh, how was the experience of goodwill etc and this was my achievement and we just posted and we get many reviews uh, reviews and uh, uh, appreciations etc from these people so it's one of the best things uh, i so i would this to you guys so hmm. so my tip for young people to build their community is is to uh, is to join good work that's it uh, so it's a, it's a tip uh, but i think it more than a tip you guys can develop it as uh, in your own way and also um, we have several activities like i am the student council leader so this year we have student council also so you guys can join the student council but uh, for now now it's over uh, you have to wait uh, so uh yeah for now it's over sorry for that so thank you guys that's it and uh, thank you in a circle hosain and everybody stay safe and healthy this is my and this is the uh, instagram page this is my profile and also this is my uh, good well good, good well profile so guys thank you thank you all good cool i also wanted to add something Uh, we have a group in goodwill iranians community on goodwill you can easily sorry you can easily message me on uh, instagram or other social media platforms through this link that i'm sending i will add you to the goodwill uh, iranians uh, group on goodwill and i have to say that 
as Google said, Google is a really great and also safe community for uh, teenagers and also, you know, college students, university students to come and join us. Uh, I've made a lot of friends, for example, Roberto and Google. Uh, I found them there. We text each other and we became friends. Uh, and as I said, we have many groups on uh, Google. So if you are from Iran, you can uh, join our group on Google. Uh, and one more thing that Goodwill is going to be uh, closing its gates because it's going because of famine people are coming in so that only if a person is inside Goodwill can refer a person to get inside it's yeah, going to be closed the uh, closed such a way you can contact me uh, through that link and at the last of session I have to say that uh, the country of residence of our speakers so you can uh, talk to the best option you would choose Google and Nainik are from India, so if you join us and you're from India, you can talk with them. Uh, yes, Nainika sent her Instagram, so you can talk with her. I put a link, I'm from Iran, me and Mehdi. If you're from Iran and you wanted to get any information about Goodwill and other platforms, how we can become international as you're in Iran, so you can contact me via that link that I've just sent. And we have Roberto from Mexico. Uh, if you're from Mexico or other countries and you wanna contact him, I will put a link to his website and also his Instagram in the chat box so you can ask. Now, Mehdi can go for the last speech. In the final, uh, thank you for participating in our webinar and thank uh, Jose and Roberto and uh, Gutu and uh, Nainika for speaking uh, in this webinar. Uh, I Make the audio and uh, I hope enjoy uh, from uh, the webinar. Mm, good luck and uh, uh, saying you can uh, speak. Thank you all. Thank you for participating in our webinar. We are reaching the end of uh, this session. We will send your certificates via your emails after the session. I hope we can send them uh, tomorrow night. And again, thank you all the speakers, Gukul, Mehdi, Nainika, Roberto, for joining us today and giving us this opportunity to uh, connect with in this big community. I think we reached to in an invitation. So thank you all and uh, see you in our next events. And we will contact with you through, uh, through the previous uh, platform that we have contacted for the next events. Also, we have another event uh, next week. So we will let you know. And for now, I have to say goodbye to all participants. Roberto and Aini can Google if you have anything to say, you can add. Yeah, I, I forgot to say something like there was a open, an open 17 summer challenge that had held by uh, one of the, what was it, Hussein was in that also with me uh, so we were teammates in that because of good world we got, got that opportunity so yeah it was a great experience for us we uh, go to see scientists from uh, CERN uh, CERN of the CERN then you were to see you know UNO etc so uh, I forgot to say that so I think good is a great community for everyone uh, yeah. yes they were from University of Geneva and United Nations and that was good wall uh, that connect us uh, with those organization. Nainika, if you have anything to say, you can add as the last speech. Yes, we had wonderful audience because the questions which I got uh, in the private message too, they are really awesome. Looking forward to interact with you all. And if at any point of time you guys have any query or you are at the beginning of having an organization or anything, we have to work on their growth strategy so if i can help you in any way it will be like i'll, I'll feel honored so that's it and it was a wonderful event thank can thank you Hussein, for inviting me for this so yeah that's it i put also a link for nainika instagram so you can text her there thanks for the question now roberto if you have anything to say yeah, I just want to thank uh, all the uh, participants and the organizers of this event. It's uh, really a joyful experience to share this time with you. And I hope to see you on next events. Wish you all the best. 
And as everyone says on this reunion, we yeah, you can contact uh, any of the link and we will uh, lovely to uh, share a little bit more of your questions and uh, uh, our experience. So thank you so much. All right. Dear participants, our session was hosted by Inner Circle Magazine, Youth Building the Future Global and so Brain Space and Club Magnet. Thank you all our partners and speakers that accepted our invitation and came here and joined us. Thank you all. I think that due to our time limitations, we reached the end of the session and it is time to say goodbye. Bye guys. Have a Thank good you for coming. Thank you everyone for coming and joining us. Have a good day. Bye guys. Bye.